this is the order of events. Uh, what we're going to do just to kick things off is um, hopefully everybody's aware that Tableau pushed out. I want to say, was it y'all, was it earlier this week or was it late last week that they pushed out 2020.2? So, That's like three weeks ago. Oh, wow. So we're behind the times. Sorry. Um, so 2020.2 got pushed out um, a few weeks back. And what I wanted to do was spend just a few minutes talking through some of the cool things that are inside of 2020.2. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that there's three really big things, and then we'll kind of touch on some of the smaller things. Um, the first one is just this new concept of what we call relationships. Uh, I'm going to show you just a quick example of this, but I want to give you a preview that in July, we're going to have a deep dive into the concepts of relationships. Um, but relationships uh, are really uh, amazing and helpful for Tableau's data modeling, and it allows for something that has been a struggle in the past, which is many to many relationships. Um, and it, it helps with uh, you know, things like granularity and cardinality and, and a bunch of things that as you get farther into kind of the data process, you begin to run into some of these complexities. And so um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this um, because we are going to have uh, a, a deeper dive into this. Um, but I do want to show just very quickly. So this is the new 2020.2. Um, I went and got some, some Major League Baseball data the other day. Um, and so what I've got here is just um, all the batting statistics season by season uh, by all the different players that have ever played in the Major Leagues going back to 1874 through, I want to say, 2015. Um, and I've got this player ID, but I don't have a name. And so um, very similar to what I would have done in the past. Um, I'm going to go and grab this thing called master. Uh, this is like a master data set with all the players and, and all their information. But as you can see, as I'm bringing this out, um, I now have this kind of what they call the noodle. Um, and so this noodle is going to be my new kind of relationship thing. And um, the nice thing here is I, I have the ability to do multiple join ish type of things. So I could, it, it found that the player and player ID in both places is there. Uh, and then I can also kind of say, hey, um, is, it, is this a mini to mini? Is it a one to one? Is it a, you know, what's going on here? And so in this particular case, there's one record per each person, and then there's a bunch of seasons that, they, that they've added. So it's a mini to one, and all the records should match, right? So um, that kind of just gives me a sense of, of being able to do that. And if you, if you don't really understand or, or don't feel comfortable or whatever, and you want to go back to doing it the old way, the, the easiest thing to do is just double click right into that thing. And you can kind of think of the relationship piece as kind of being a little grouping of how you're going to do this data. So I could do the exact same thing um, that I just did a minute ago, but have that uh, old experience where I'm kind of doing a, a very particular inner join again on that player ID piece. And I've specified my join and I can bring out multiple pieces here. Um, so you can make this as uh, simple or as complicated as you want to, um, but that's how that works. And so if I'm done editing that kind of specific uh, data piece, I can come back and kind of, here's my grouping, here's my grouping, uh, and so forth, right? So um, relationships, again, be a much bigger deep dive um, coming uh, in the future. And so uh, a couple other things that um, are released in this new 2020.2 uh, are things like metrics um, and set control. So set control, I'm going to go ahead and show you here. Um, set control is very interesting because it allows for basically like a, a, a multi-select dynamic parameter. Um, you know, we got kind of a phased approach. I think I've been wanting, I started using Tableau in 2011, and I think I, I've been wanting, which is nine years ago, and I think I've been wanting a dynamic parameter for about 8.75 years uh, of my time using Tableau. Um, and this was one of those things that, um, I remember wanting kind of a dynamic selection, and so set control is that. Um, so the the way you do that is you just kind of build out a set. Um, and for us, actually, I think I got rid of mine, but um, we built out a set previously where I, I kind of called out the ability to bat left or right. Um, and so it kind of feels like just a, a normal multi-select thing, but this is actually a set that's uh, behaving as such. So kind of a fun thing there. And then the last thing that I was going to show is metrics. Um, and so uh, when you come into something that you're doing in, um, in Tableau, whether it be online or whatever, um, anything that you select. Um, so like if, if I'm just in a, in a viz that I'm, I'm looking at on online or Tableau server, whatever, 
um, if I want to be able to track this, um, so what I'm looking at right now is all the batting averages um, for all the different players for the Atlanta Braves. The Braves came to Atlanta back in 1966, and so this data goes through 2015. So you could, you know, look in here. Uh, we could type in Hank Aaron, right? Kind of see how Hank was doing. So kind of here's Hank and, and doing really good stuff. Uh, we go back and kind of find maybe Dale Murphy, right? So here's Dale doing some big things. Really good stuff. Kind of slid off toward the end and ended up getting traded towards Philly. Um, you know, Chipper Jones, Freddie Freeman, all these guys are in the data, right? So um, the way that we would we would go build a um, – Freddie, the way we go build a metric is that we would just kind of go find a data point that we want to track. So if I wanted to track Freddie or if I just wanted – to track kind of everybody, like the, the team batting average over the course of time. Um, either one of those would work. Um, maybe go back and let's do Hank Aaron real quick. All right, so here's Hank's uh, batting average. So I'm just gonna click this. And then what I'm gonna do from there is just click on metrics. And this is basically gonna say, hey, looks like you want to take this point and build a metric out of it. Is that right? And I'll say, sure, right? Um, and so this would be, I'll just do a, a batting average for Mr. Hank Aaron. And what that'll do, once I hit OK, uh, is recognizing the fact that I've got a date dimension and a measure, so it's going to give me a trend line once we create it. Um, and then we'll just throw that together, boom, just like that. And so now it's built me a new metric, and now I can go to that metric. Um, I get a nice little slick experience here. <clears throat> and so these are, uh, this is kind of Hank's batting average from 1966 through that 74 season. 74, by the way, is the year that uh, I think it's April 8th of 1974 that he hit uh, that 715 home run. So um, a couple of things that I like and don't like, you have a really nice consistency, nice little interactivity piece here. Don't love the fact that I, I don't, uh, I tried to control the precision. I tried a couple of different things and it didn't work. Um, so the, the ability to control the precision is not quite there quite yet. So um, that was a little bit annoying. Um, one other thing though that I really do like is I'm going to try to um, start this broadcast from my phone. All right, so um, I do love the experience um, of my phone here. So uh, if you guys can see this, so earlier I made a, a Chipper Jones uh, metric, and I mean, that was the year that Chipper won the MVP, so that was awesome. Good job, Chipper. Um, and then I could also go back and just see the, the entire team's batting average. It's really interesting to see how good they were back when they were good um, and then how bad the batting average was um, when they weren't good, right? Like kind of back in here, that 2014 team was not very good. And then certainly some of these teams in the 80s, man, those things were, whew. <clears throat> um, but um, I, just, I do really like this experience. If there's a couple metrics that I know I want to look at kind of time and time again uh, on the go, it's right there. Um, if it's not a trend line, it's just kind of a big number. Um, so all those things are there. So um, I just wanted to kind of give us a, a quick debrief on that. Let's see if I can get my, oh, am I still sharing? How do I get back to sharing? There we go. Hold on, one more. I got one more little thing I was going to show. Um, now, so while you pull that up, we did have a question. Yeah, what's up? That I'm not sure the answer to. So it's, uh, it's probably going to be helpful for a lot of people. So with the, the new noodle model, right, mm -hmm. the dimensions and measures section of our kind of the normal biz window, um, yes. they're not separated anymore. It's kind of Correct. just separated by a line. Um, and it groups stuff differently, that sort of thing. Uh, the question is, is there a way to revert back to the old view? Is that like a setting? I yes. that. Such a know? good question. Yeah, so let me do this real quick. Uh, I'm going to duplicate uh, the data source that I built. I'm going to go back to, so this was our noodle, kind of our new version of it, right? <clears throat> if I go back to the old school and build it old school style, uh, get that inner join right there, and then I come back. Um, let me see if this is true. I believe, it, no, actually it does not do that. Uh, so it does not look like you can go back to the old school way. Now, um, that's maybe disappointing for some folks, um, but I do have this kind of interesting transition. Um, Tableau just released the beta for 2020.3, and one of the things I noticed um, is a very is something that I've always wanted, 
Um, and so we have improved search features. So say you want to find only the calculations uh, in your pane over here. You can now do that. My goodness, I can't believe it took them that long. Um, and if you want to find only your dimensions, you can you can now do that. So it's just kind of D colon, M colon for measures, and then I guess F colon for comments. So, That's awesome. I know, super pumped about that one. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, super, super, super excited about that. And, and that's kind of where I was going to leave everybody was um, go check out the, the new coming soon stuff. One of the biggest things that's in this one is the fact that you are now going to be able to write back to a database um, in Tableau Prep. So specifically, if you've got like a, a Snowflake or a SQL Server or a Google BigQuery or something like that, um, you can now kind of pull the data down run it through prep and then actually write it back if you've got like a sandbox or something like that. A um, couple other ones that were super cool were there's kind of a new predictive modeling function that's now inside of Tableau that um, best I understand it, you don't need to have an R server or a Python server running in the background and be sending things out and getting them back. So I can only imagine that they may begin to enhance that um, as we go farther in. Um, and speaking of the word in, there is now a new function in 2020.3 called the in function. Uh, so think about how cool this would be with kind of dynamic parameters. Um, we've always wanted the ability to use like an in. So right now we have to write, you know, if this thing is equal to this, or if it's 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 equal. Now we have something called in, and it basically just tests whether uh, country is in this case in in this set right here. So. Um, Super helpful for a lot of those things right there. Um, and then there was one other one that I thought was really cool. I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. So a lot of really good stuff. Um, I'm excited about kind of what's coming. Uh, one thing I did notice um, was that if you wanted to use explain data um, on anything that you've done kind of the, the new noodle on, it does not work. It is not an option for you. So explain data gets grayed out here. Uh, that new way um, on this new data set here, uh, it would work here if I if I was going to go build a, a thing here. So um, because I, well, maybe not, maybe it didn't take very well. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. So I thought it worked, um, but uh, with the new noodle explain data, I think is, is maybe TBD. So um, that's a bunch of new stuff. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, definitely encourage everybody to go explore it, check it out.